Hey folks, Video Fort Angel here. We are back with more Logic Pro X, and today is going to be a little bit more in depth because I'm going to show you some advanced things that you can go back and apply um, to previous work that we've done. Obviously, I don't want to give you too much at once, um, so we had to go through the basics, but now we're moving up into the big leagues, folks. So um, today I'm going to focus on session management and give you some um, easy mixing techniques. I'm not going to be so much about stylistic stuff, I'm just going to show you the technical bits so that you can make your own choices uh, in mixing, because they're your ears and you know what you like. Um, but for today, uh, I'm going to start with the basics. Obviously, color coding. Um, this is very hand handy with Logic uh, because, you know, you can just identify instruments right off the bat by what color they are. Um, I've introduced you to color before and, you know, you can kind of pick your own scheme. Maybe you like to keep the rhythm instruments in the low end, like drums and bass and stuff, a lower color, like a purple or a dark color vocals, you know, maybe brighter colors. That's totally at your own discretion. Um, sometimes when you do choose a color, you see how I've got uh, Kayla here in orange, but down here it's still blue like it was before. Um, sometimes if you find that happens, just open up the color window, which is Alt Option, hold that and see. Ta-da! Now when you pull that up, see the color? She's highlighted. That's the color that she is. Go down here and click on Kayla. Just click on it. It looks highlighted already, but if you just click, click, click right here um, and click here, ta-da, identified. You could do the same thing with uh, this Darcy. I've got two people shoved on this track, but let's just ignore that. We'll call it Darcy. Sorry about that, Byron. Um, uh, here we go, clicking here. It's that light blue. I can select it. So at least it kind of shows you what color you're using. It's not too not too terrible. So color coding helps. Um, even if you're just doing it for groups, not every single individual track has to have its own color. You might have drums or purple, all of them, you know, if you have, if you're recording individual bits. Um, all the vocals can be pink, you know, like however you want to do it. So um, you learned about balancing in our last tutorial. Um, Part of balancing is also panning. So before you get into plugins or anything like that when you're about to mix, make sure that um, you have first addressed your volume and panning because that's where your real picture is. Okay, so anybody who's mixed before knows that if you've never really mixed anything and you're just starting to get into that, start with the big picture, folks. Don't get too meta about it because that's, that's no bueno. So um, this is our 80s track that we did last time, and I reached into Appa Loops and I pulled out a couple vocal bits just to give it some extra pizzazz. And uh, we have plenty going on here. It's mostly balanced. Um, as you're li listening, you know, you might want to pan some things to the right or to the left. Um, just make sure when you're listening, you know, move stuff around and see how it sits. And once you've got all of that stuff, the volume and the placement, these pans right here, see? Once you've got all of that in a comfortable place, that's when I would advise starting to put plugins on it and stuff like that. So only then. First do your balancing and your panning, then get into your effects. It's a good rule. All right, so I'm going to show you some stuff. I'm going to go backwards just a little bit because I didn't want to give you guys too much while you were still learning the basics. But at this point, you are ready for the advanced stuff. So um, I'm going to open uh, Global Tracks, which is just... a uh, pressing the G key. Here we go. All right, so as you can see here, uh, we have arrangement, we have marker, we have signature, we have tempo. What does it all mean? Well, arrangement is just going to be sections of the song. Marker is going to be when you need to mark certain places in the song, say you have notes, or there's a part that you want to be able to see is coming. If you're doing automation, you want to make your changes there, etc. Signature is just your uh, time signature. We are 4-4. Four, four. So you can see that, and we have our keys here. I don't really know why they change, but let's not get too into that, because that's not really applicable to what we're doing right now. Tempo is, see where this line is? It's at 120, and it says it right here very faintly, 120. So if I were to like click this and raise it up, like drag it up, it would uh, change the tempo. Um, I could also maybe, you know, just like insert a little click point and then change the speed there say, you know, somewhere in the track, it just goes fast. Uh, 
you know, and like it's a slow one and then you get to the bridge and you decide to totally change the speed of the track. You can do stuff like that. It's pretty cool. But for intents and purposes, we're keeping things very, very uniform today. Um, so let's get to arrangement first. Um, if you press plus, intro. Okay. So um, the cool thing about the arrangement tool is that it kind of um, chooses parts for you. And you still can go in and choose what those parts are. Say you might not have the exact same arrangement as it has laid out here. Um, but we've got an intro. Let's say this is our intro. All the way to five. Okay. And then the next will be our verse. And that'll be up to nine. So you see how this works? This helps you just kind of know what section of the song you're in. Now marker... Um, you know, say I want to keep track of the arrangements up here, but say there's a part like, oh, the guitar comes in or the vocal comes in right here. So what I'm going to do is, uh, Nathan here starts at seven. Um, so I'm going to drag my playhead to seven. I'm going to press the plus sign here and that creates a marker. And I can say, even though Nathan, clearly we can see that he enters a little bit before he enters over here, but for intents and purposes, here we are. Okay, so now you have a means to um, mark the spots of your arrangement, and you can also mark little things that happen. So this is a good way to kind of keep track of what's going on in the track um, beyond just being able to look at the colors and identify the instruments. So that's really handy stuff. So I'm going to get rid of the uh, global track information right now by pressing G again. G and it disappears. Yay. But see my marker is still there. So the cool thing about markers is they'll stay. You'll know where things are if you need little pieces. Um, otherwise you want to keep it open. Um, you can also forego using the arrangement and just mark places uh, with the marker tool and that way when you have your global tracks closed you'll still have those pieces. Totally up to you. Um, so now let's come down to the mixer. As you recall, X marks the spot. There's the mixer. X and it goes away and it comes back. Yay! All right, so I've got things pretty balanced at this point, um, and I'm going to show you just a couple little tricks. Uh, first of all, um, you can insert plugins individually on each channel. You know how to do that. That's pretty simple stuff. You go in audio effects, you choose whichever effects you want, you uh, zhuzh them accordingly, you know, pick your EQ levels, how much distortion you want, whatever it is that you want and then you move along. But say all these vocals, say this is all one singer and it's background vocals or something, right? And you want all of these to function as a group. What I just did is I clicked on, you see our friend Nathan right here is where it begins and it ends with the Darcy down here. So I'm gonna hold the shift key and this is the whole span. I'm gonna go to the end of the span and click on that last track and it's gonna highlight all of these guys. And you can do it in a different way too. Say you wanted to, to just uh, highlight certain ones. so. Nathan, I'm holding the uh, command key. I can choose them individually. So there's a couple different ways to create groups um, in that way. So right now I have these all highlighted, which means they're all grouped together. So I can actually adjust their combined volume. Okay, so they sit well against each other, but maybe they, just, they don't sit well in the mix and they, they need to be boosted. You just, bam, bring them up, bring them down, whatever you like. Um, so that's one way of uh, grouping volume. Now I'm going to show you um, how to kind of insert an effect. Maybe you have, uh, you created uh, a reverb for Nathan here that you think would sound good on everybody, right? Um, and you have, you have specific parameters. Let me drag the reverb over here. Here we go. So, um, so you have very specific parameters. Um, and you created uh, sounds just for this track. Maybe you have an EQ or something like that, um, that it sounds good and you have all the vocals you want to, you want them all to sound that way. I mean, you could uh, hold the Alt Option and Command and drag them over and do that. That's how you create duplications of a plugin. But you can also do something called bussing. And bussing is super handy when you want to take a group and, and just kind of bus it all over to one fader, and then you can control everything from that fader. So that's what we're gonna do here. If you look at the outputs, see how they all say stereo out? So each one of these tracks, 
as you recall, we're sending to this guy right here, stereo out. But say I wanted to create, you know, that uh, bus and have all of these guys go through a reverb or, or a vocal chain of some sort. So I'm going to go do that little highlighting trick again and click and hold bus one. Okay, so you see what that just did? That created this guy right here, Augs1. So um, it is a bus. If you're confused, you can change the name, or if you want to keep it super organized, this is the vocal group, so we'll call this vocal effects. Yay! So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this reverb that I was using on just Nathan, and uh, everybody's going to go there now. Okay? So... <laughs> you knew I was going to have some fun with these apple loops, come on. Alright, so we're doing that thing. I'm going to turn the reverb off just so you can see kind of how everything is affected. Dry, right? Turn it on. So see, all of these are being sent here. Isn't that nifty? Pretty cool. So you can create buses with uh, respective chains of plugins for anything that you do. Say you want to sum all your drums up to one little guy and it all has a sound, you can do that now. Um, and another thing that you can do is on the stereo out because remember even your bus here is going to eventually go to your stereo out everything ends up here so um, when you have the whole track at a kind of a good place you got the volume you got the plugins you got everything you can throw a mastering plugin a compressor whatever you like some more EQ because sometimes things sound individually good but when you lump them all together it just needs a little bit more notching so you can go in and you can throw an EQ on it, you can throw a plug-in on it, um, and it just will uh, give you the option to modify the track. So let's go here and just show you kind of how that works. That thing. Na, na, na. To boost the high end, so you can come here. That thing. That thing. So you see how that works. And if you have stuff like mastering plugins. Um, you can throw those on and you can just really beef up the track. You can compress it. You can uh, get that volume cranking a little hotter before it goes to uh, your master fader, all of that stuff. So there's lots of handy little tricks in this tutorial that I hope you will use. Um, start playing around and creating a full mix. We did rough mix last time, so create something full. See how it sounds. Bounce it down. Try it on a bunch of different speakers. See how you like it. Um, next time we're going to do an overview. I'm going to show you lots of hotkeys that are going to make your workflow and process so much faster. Until then, I'm Video Fort Angel. It's always a pleasure. Have fun with Logic Pro X, and I'll see you next time.